Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. We're continuing our series on profitable niches in real estate, different ways and different types of property you can invest in. And what if your investment property was an awesome place that you'd love to stay occasionally? Today, we're gonna to talk about investing in resort property, what we call lifestyle investing on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Stop for a moment. Why are you listening to this show? Are you dreaming of a bigger, brighter financial future? More personal freedom to live life on your own terms? What if there was just one skill that could make it happen? There is, sales. Robert Kiyosaki says every entrepreneur must be good at sales. It's true for investors too. Sales is how you attract money, people, and opportunities. Sales is the skill used to negotiate deals and lead your team. Sales skills are essential to success. The good news is it's a learnable skill. The great news is we've created a two-day interactive workshop to teach those skills to you. Make plans today to attend How to Win Funds and Influence People, Mastering the Art of Financial Selling. For dates and details, send an email to sales at realestateguysradio.com or visit realestateguysradio.com and look under events. Gain the skills you need to succeed. Email sales at realestateguysradio.com or look under the events tab at realestateguysradio.com. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, co-host financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. We're continuing our profitable niches in real estate. This has been great. There's been a series of shows and all the different types of things you can invest in. And of course, we can't cover them all, but we've talked about mobile home parks. We've talked about assisted living, and we've talked about self-storage. And last week, we talked about international property. And this week, we've got kind of a fun niche. A lot of real estate investing is designed to create an ROI, and that makes a ton of sense. But, you know, spending a week or so with uh, Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart and looking at the eight different forms of capital, it's not just financial capital. In real estate, some real estate can give you personal enjoyment and use. And that's what we're going to talk about today, what we call lifestyle investing. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about this a lot, and I think it just continues to make a lot of sense and, and a couple of reasons why. One is, obviously, life is too short to do things or go places or deal with people or be involved in an asset class or an activity that you don't enjoy. And I think most people enjoy vacationing. Most people enjoy uh, exotic destinations. Most people enjoy nice properties. The challenge with nice properties typically is you can't get them to pencil. Right. They don't end up working out from an investment point of view. But if you do it correctly, there is a way to do that. And that's really what lifestyle investing is all about. And the other part of it is, is just understanding what's going on demographically. Robert Kiyosaki has been telling us for ages that the way the financial system is working, there's going to continue to be a spread, a gap between the people who have a lot of money and the people who don't have very much money. The middle class is getting pushed down or up, depending on how they choose to deal with the situation. Of course, on this show, we're all about if you're middle class, teaching you how to join the ranks of the affluent. The point is, is when you're doing a lifestyle type investment, your target market is not the bottom end, it's not the poor people or the, the, the lower middle class people, but it's the upper tier. And those people will pay a premium to have an opportunity to enjoy a nice property. And the market is a lot bigger than just your local region. And so there's a lot of reasons why lifestyle investing can make a ton of sense strategically. You know, I always say live where you want to live and invest where the numbers make sense. But uh, the idea here is to vacation in a place you'd love to go and then consider is there an investment opportunity. And you don't have to do both. But the typical lifestyle investor is a person that says, hey, I love Hawaii or I love a ski resort or I love to go to whatever beach. And because I like to go there and spend time there and take my family there, rather than pay rent every time I go, what if I bought a place and then when I wasn't using it, I'd rent it out? Pretty simple concept. The challenge with that is making sure that you're not trying to mismatch two things, an investment philosophy and a personal use. Meaning I could pick a house on the beach that I love, but perhaps the local property manager says, you know, that doesn't make a very good rental because of A, B, and C. So finding something that has both, that has an appealing rental performance, but at the same time as a place you wouldn't mind going from time to time, that's what we're talking about. Now, pure resort investing, which is kind of a subset of this, means, hey, I find a great market and a great opportunity and a great property with professional management and the ROI 
is awesome. I don't ever have to physically visit it. I just can send my money there and it'll come back with friends. But a true lifestyle investment is where you say, well, you know what, two or three weeks out of the year, I'd like to go stay and I'd like to be in my beautiful condo with a view of the pool. And then the rest of the time, I'm going to rent it out. Now, in that area of real estate investment, there's lots of different things. And really, it is it dependent upon the lifestyle part. There's a lot of great ski resorts. If you like to ski, if you love to ski, a ski resort can be an excellent lifestyle investment. One of the challenges with any kind of a property like that is that ski season is typically only part of the year. Right Now, there's a couple of great areas where there are things to do in the winter and things to do in the summer. So one of the things you have to think about is seasonality. I might love to go to see the leaves turn in the fall, but that's a pretty short window of time, right? Not shovel the snow, though, in the winter, right? That's the other part of it. That's exactly it. So I, I think to get your mind around this, it's can there be an opportunity that makes sense financially that also happens to be in a place that I'd like to go. Well, and I think there's some things financially that you have to take into consideration that you don't normally take into consideration when you're just looking at a pure investment property. If I'm buying a property out of area, a straight investment property, it's natural for me to deduct my travel. But the only reason I'm going there is to go see my property. So right. I'm having to spend money that I wasn't going to spend otherwise. But if you look at a resort or a lifestyle type property, you're going to take money that you're already spending because you're going to go on vacation. You're going to go away to this area because you want to, not because you have to, because you want to. And then when you go, you check on your investment property and check with your CPA. You may be able to deduct that trip. So you just converted money that you were going to spend anyway into a deductible expense. So that's one part of it. The other part of it is when you go away to go on vacation, you spend money to rent a place to be in. That's money that you would spend. When you go to your own property, you don't have to spend that money. And so even though there's no money coming to you and there's no money going out, you're getting the benefit of the use of the property. And so that is saving you the money you were going to spend anyway. And so Ben Franklin said, a penny saved is a penny earned. Right. And so you, when you put those into your ROI calculation, you begin to realize some of the financial benefits of owning a lifestyle type property uh, aren't just the property itself, but they're some of the peripheral things that you would be able to do with the property or write off because of the property, money that you were spending anyway, or benefits that you, you were paying someone else for anyway. Now, you talked earlier about the idea that the nicer, more expensive properties don't necessarily pencil out. Think about single family homes. The nicest neighborhood near you where the homes are really expensive, what you could rent that home for, even to an executive isn't probably going to make a good ROI, which is why lots of single family investors are focused on maybe B and C plus kind of assets. A lot of apartment investors don't want to buy class A because the returns aren't as good. Yeah, they're beautiful properties. There's not as much deferred maintenance, but at the end of the day, the return isn't as high. What's great about lifestyle investing is you can buy a premium property and because it's a premium property, it fetches a premium rate, meaning people spend a lot of money. You know, one of the markets that we go into quite regularly on our field trips is the market of Belize and part of the story there is lifestyle investing. There are places in Belize that would rent for $1,500 a month to a month to month person that will rent for $400 a night to a vacationer. And that, in essence, is where the opportunity is for a lot of these resort properties. People pay a lot of money per night to have a fabulous unit in a great environment where there's lots of activities and you get to benefit from that. Now, the downside of it is a property like that has substantially more management cost yeah. than a single family home, right? And depending on where you buy a single family home, you're going to pay a property manager 6%, 8%, 12%, some amount, and the market's going to dictate that of the monthly rent to cover their costs of renting the unit, of managing it, and so forth. And you're going to get the net of that. Well, on a resort property, it might be 50%, right? Some of these really nice properties, they have a lot of expenses. But think about it. They're checking people in every few days. There's housekeeping. There's a bell staff. There's people running around making sure the place is clean. If it's a beach location, there's going to be folks who are cleaning the beach and making sure that people have towels and all the stuff you need and umbrellas. If it's a winter destination, you, right? So you've got a lot of cost and expense. So the key is to figure out, is there a range where it can be profitable on its own 
And then the fact that you take two or three weeks is just that decision you make. You're not taking the income, you're taking the lifestyle as your return. Yeah. So, it, you know, in, in anything, it's really, it's more of a type of a business. Uh, it's like residential assisted living. The cash flows are great, but you're, you're, you're running a business that, that is a lot more hands-on than a regular property management with a long-term tenant. So it's, it's a give and take and you have to factor all that in. But again, if the, if the numbers pencil at the end of the day, all the work that needs to be done can be hired out. And that's the way you ought to be looking at it. Well, and, and, and on that point, that's part of your mission as an investor isn't just to pick the neighborhood and the property, but you've really got to vet management and what their positioning is in the marketplace. We always talk about durability of rent. If I find a great rental unit and it's rented at a price and I say, well, based on that rent today, it makes sense. I have to take one more step and I have to say, wait a minute, what happens when this tenant moves out? Is there another tenant standing in line to rent this property? That's durability of the rent. Oh yeah, my gosh, as soon as this thing is empty, we'll fill it right up. It's really important that you take that tact in this type of property because there's a lot of really nice places to go that are very seasonal or aren't very occupied or really don't make financial sense. Yeah, it's like we talk about all the time in any type of real estate investing, you have to understand the market first. You, that has to have the right underlying dynamics for the type of outcome you're looking for and the type of property you're buying. So that's number one. Number two is you have to have a great team, a great property management team, whether it's, you know, an apartment building or a mobile home park or whatever it is, you know, any type of property that's going to generate income is going to have customers and those customers have to be taken well care of. And if that's not done, then it doesn't matter what the market could deliver because you're not ever going to see it. Right. You have have to make sure that you've got the right people boots on the ground but when you get the right market and the right property and the right team you can have a real winning combination and the beautiful thing again about this type of investment lifestyle investing is the the extra benefits and the fact that you get to cater to a demographic that's willing to pay a premium uh, over and above and more capable of rolling with the ups and downs of economic activity I mean rich people or affluent people uh, people who are you know upper middle class and, and and above they go on vacation pretty much in good times and bad it's the people who are living more frugal lifestyle that a vacation is a real splurge and when things get tough they can't do it so you have to think about the property who are you appealing to and will the property continue to have a good demand even when things are a little bit slow economically and in a good economy all ships rise right so that's great but you want to make sure that you're you're thinking it through so to your point Robert about durability of income it's it's not just durability you know making sure that you've got a lot of people in line to, to come in and and rent the property uh, when when you have your turnover or whatever but also making sure that through the economic cycles the ups and downs that there continues to be a, a demand for the type of property and location that you've uh, purchased speaking of demand our guest today is in one of the strongest resorts resort markets in the world. You meet him when we come back today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Have you decided to invest in real estate but find you don't have the time to evaluate your options? Successful real estate investing takes expertise, market knowledge, and time. Many affluent investors with busy schedules choose to rely on real estate experts. They partner with proven teams with a successful track record. Four Peaks Capital Partners have created a system which allows accredited investors an opportunity to invest in undervalued assets. If you're an accredited investor looking for passive income, call 877-5-INCOME. That's 877-5-INCOME or visit Private Income investments.com. Memphis is famous for being the home of the king of rock and roll, but it's also the king of cash flow. If you're looking for affordable cash flow properties, it's hard to beat Memphis. Get your portfolio rocking and more cash flowing your way by calling Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers. Terry's the king of turnkey properties. Contact Terry through the resource section at realestateguysradio.com. And be sure to order Terry's tips for turnkey rental property investing report. It's free. Just send your request to turnkey at realestateguysradio.com. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects 
totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Hi, this is Lawrence Yuan, Chief Economist with National Association of Realtors, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. It's our Profitable Niches series. Uh, the last few weeks, we've been talking about different ways to invest in real estate. Today, we're talking about resort investing or lifestyle investing. Let's welcome to The Real Estate Guys program, Nick Rohrbach. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you, and more importantly, it's great to be here in beautiful Orlando, Florida. This is a strong market for the kind of niche we're talking about. Tell us the big picture stuff on Orlando. So Orlando is the number one travel to place in the world with 74 million people visiting Orlando just last year alone. Um, And the economy is only growing. There's always a crane in Disney World. Disney World just opened Pandora, which is Avatar World. Um, And the next thing to open is Star Wars. So there's an extreme amount of growth going on in the or not just Orlando, but the areas near Disney. Yeah, this is a one of the big drivers, obviously, is not just Disney, but all the theme parks that are here. And you mentioned, right, such a the airport's amazing. There's a huge convention business here. People are coming here to spend time away from home. And the resorts are phenomenal. Everybody knows the you know, Walt Disney World resorts and so forth. But throughout the uh, entire greater Orlando area, You have folks that are coming to spend a week, two weeks, a month, and vacation. Yeah, absolutely. Not only that, but uh, Orlando is such a global draw to it. On top of the 74 million people that came, Orlando is number two in convention business in the country, next to Las Vegas. They go back and forth often in times. You know, I remember in the early 2000s, the Orange County Convention Center was the single largest convention center on earth. Uh, and then, of course, Las Vegas added their new convention center and they went and then back. Right. So it is this back and forth. But if you think about a, a market driver, why somebody wants to come somewhere, the weather here is great. The attractions are great. Convention business makes sense here because the family can come to someone who's, you know, the doctor or dentist is attending a, a physician's conference and the family can come because there's lots for them to do. And the infrastructure exists to get all those people around. I mean, I know I've been to a half a dozen conferences here in the last three or four years because it's a great place to have a group of people come. I mean, we're here for our quarterly meetup with our syndication mentoring club. And we are looking for a destination where we can come and gather and have convention space, but also have access to restaurants and things to do, right? None of us are going to Disney this, this week, but we're, we're definitely interested in the vibrancy in, in the market. We checked in to get our rental car at midnight on a Wednesday. And there were lines at the place. I mean, a lot of people are looking around, they're getting frustrated. Like there's so many people in baggage claim and there's so many people at the rental car desk. We're looking around going, that's awesome. Absolutely. Orlando's, you know, so centrally located that an hour and 20 minutes to the West Coast, you can be at a beautiful beach. Uh, Siesta Key is the number one beach in the country. And then an hour and 20 minutes in the other way, you can be at the East Coast, Cocoa Beach, Uh, is world renowned. It's a great hub having the most direct flights out of uh, Orlando, MCO. Um, Again, it's a very large international draw. Now, in addition to that, there's this, you know, when I think through real estate, there's the support aspect of it, meaning that all the people that are working at these resorts and at these beautiful hotels, they've got to live somewhere too. So we like to look at what we call stories, different stories in a marketplace. Here, probably the number one story is the mouse, right? That's a big, big driver. But there's other stories. There's great medical. There's one of the largest universities. Talk about the other things that are driving the market here. There's 19 parks in uh, Central Florida alone. Uh, Medical City is booming. We have one of the largest universities um, in the country, UCF. And we have over 150 VA hospitals, the largest in the country. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. When we come here, you know, we're here probably a couple times a year. 
there's always cranes in the air. You mentioned that. There's always construction going on. And uh, last night, of course, the roads are closed down because they're widening some of the roads. I mean, it's there's really a vibrancy here. And we've been pretty upbeat on Orlando for a number of years. But when you, you know, say Orlando, it's like any market. It's the greater Orlando area. And there's lots of different things to do here. I mean, Legoland. And I mean, there's so many different things uh, that you can do. And we're talking today, of course, about you know, resort property and the idea that could I benefit as an investor of, of being being part of this. I look around, I see, you know, 300 units here, 1,800 units there, a beautiful Marriott Hotel, a Hilton Hotel over them. There's a lot of that business and then all the, you know, the Disney properties and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about supply and demand. I mean, you could look at this market and say there's so many hotel rooms already. And yet what we're seeing is that if you build it, they will come. Absolutely. Um, there's several billions and billions of dollars pouring into the tourism um, sector of Orlando. Margaritaville's just down the road. Um, it's a billion dollar project. That's four years out. Okay. So the occupancy level across the board, the average occupancy in Orlando in this sector um, is 75 to 80%. Wow. And going back to Russ's point in the downturn, if there was a downturn in the economy, even in 2009, an amazing statistic that I talk to investors all the time about, even in 2009, the average occupancy for resort properties um, around the Disney area never fell below 60%. You know, I don't often talk on the show about personal holdings. And one of the things that is interesting in this market is many, many years ago, we came to a convention uh, when I was selling real estate actively with our big company. We had a convention here and we stayed in a property that was a timeshare property. And you know, when you stay at a timeshare, they're always going to call you and say, hey, would, can we give you the tour? Can we buy your breakfast? Can we show you around? And we were just here for a convention. So we're just like, you know, we can't, we can't. Finally, the guy called every day and said, listen, I will pay you $600 in cash if you come here my 45-minute presentation. <laughs> right. So I, I looked at my dad and I said, what do you think? Okay, we'll go. And we went down and we heard the spiel, right? Anyway, the, the short of that is, you know how that story ends, right? So <laughs> we get... get in a conversation with the developer of this project. And he said, here's the deal. To me, timeshare is not real estate. Timeshare is a prepaid vacation. And it's a great thing if you'll use it. Most people don't. So this show isn't on timeshare, but you know, owning some weeks of timeshare, the timeshare property we have that has produced by far the best results is right here, 10 minutes from Disney. I mean, it's crazy. It's always full. So this market has been strong for a long, long time. And it's always that supply, demand, and balance you have to look at. Where is their opportunity? You know, you mentioned Margaritaville, right? That's a big brand and a big property going in. And that's just a whole bunch of rooms that are going to hit the market at once. And a market like this can absorb that. If I'm in a town that has three hotels and a fourth hotel goes in, well, we may have demand for rooms, but it takes a while to stabilize a property. And so I think when you see as much votes of confidence in the market as we see here, people are recognizing that the demand isn't stopping, it's increasing. And absolutely, you really need to, and if you're filling a gap in the marketplace and providing something that's unique, um, that's not out there, you're obviously going to experience higher than average occupancies and higher than average nightly rates. And that's why you see a lot of uh, new communities popping up. However, the cost of construction is rising. So things are getting more and more expensive. Um, so you want to take that into consideration when looking into lifestyle investing. Yeah, that's a really good point. You can build the newest, nicest, most fabulous, wonderful place. But if it costs an arm and a leg and the rents haven't quite approached that yet, there's that income gap. And so let's talk about the resort we're staying at here, the Grove Resort. And this is a beautiful resort with an amazing real estate story. So before we even talk about the lifestyle investment part, tell us the story of what happened here, Nick. So it's really unique. And again, it's a result. And this is really why the opportunity exists today. This property was built in 2007, 8, and 9. Okay. They, the previous developer had all the condos sold to UK investors. Uh, no one closed on a transaction. And in 2010, the bank took it back. He owed $180 million on the property. Ouch. Yeah. Um, but really, this is where the opportunity exists for investors today, where four years later, the bank that was holding it was spending 200 grand a month just keeping up the property. And the company I work for, BTI Partners, they were the lucky ones to really get it through all the litigation. And we purchased it for only $30 million. 
Wow. So that's really where that uh, $150 million uh, in equity is really irreplaceable in the marketplace. And how much of it was built then? I mean, everybody knows that that was the worst time to come out of the ground in hindsight. And you didn't know that going in. I'm sure when they were planning, looking at the market, they thought everything was great. They had sold the units. And then, oh my gosh, the, the nuclear devastation uh, that happened in, in 2008. But how much was built before you guys took it over? So it's 878 total condos. Structurally, it was all built. He actually finished 184 of the condos. Again, no one closed on a transaction. So all we had to do um, from an investment standpoint was when we acquired it, we put another 120 million back into the resort. Um, and we added these this world-class amenities. The water park just opened three weeks ago. Um, so structurally, all we have to do is build out the insides of the, of the condos as we continue construction. Well, we're sitting one now and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is my second chance to stay at the property. It's just several months ago. And then uh, you came out to the future of money and wealth and met a lot of our investors and, and listeners then. And uh, as we're looking for a place to, to host our, our quarterly meetup, we thought, well, let's let's go to the Grove because you've got convention space here. Tell us about that part of it because it's, it's a beautiful resort. There's several pools. The water park wasn't open last time I was here. It's just open now so there's plenty to do but you've also got convention space yeah going back to how the seasonality of certain markets orlando is really not seasonal um you know the average occupancy all year long is about 75 percent but we have 8,000 square feet of convention space so what what's so unique about that is out of the 74 million visitors that i spoke about previously 24 million of those were associated with group businesses yep conventions etc sports teams it's unreal um, the amount of uh, traffic that we see. But having that 8,000 square feet of convention space here allows our occupancy to be diverse. It's not just relying on that family that's going to Disney, et cetera. We can hold corporate events, weddings, all these things that keep our occupancy levels higher than average. And yet you're super close to Walt Disney World. How far is the park from here? 3.8 miles, actually. That's yeah. how close we are. We can see the fireworks every night from the <laughs> pools. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, strikes me about the place is proof of concept is is done, right? This isn't, oh, imagine one day we'll build it because you've already got 300 and something units operating. But there's a lot more to go, so there's still opportunity. Before we're done, if this sounds interesting to you, Nick's prepared a report that uh, talks about the, the property and really more than just this property. It talks about how you pick a great lifestyle investment, but there's a, this checks a lot of boxes for sure. But you know, one of the things is when people come here with their family to go to the parks, if you haven't been to Orlando, it's not inexpensive to go to the Disney parks. I mean, I think you'll be surprised at the ticket price. It's a lot of money. So when I first came here, I thought, you know, I could see coming here for a week with my kids, spending a day or two or maybe three at the parks, but then what do you do the rest of the time? Look around here and there's pools. You have a beautiful lake with boats. You've got this water park. I mean, the grounds are, are beautiful. The units are big. You've got beautiful balconies, but they're all screened in so you don't have bugs. I mean, it's a really nice place. Then you've got a couple of restaurants, nice bars, spa. You're close to golf. Talk about the kind of person that comes here and the variety of things there is to do other than just go to Walt Disney World. Yeah, one thing, again, going back to the size of the condos, that makes us very unique in the sense that we're really filling a gap in the marketplace. All of our condos here are two and three bedroom, very large. And when people are staying at Disney just three miles down the road in a hotel room, spending five, six, seven hundred dollars a night, the value that we've really brought to the marketplace has been uh, accepted phenomenally. But there's so much to do when you're on property. You don't have to go to the parks every day and spend that money. Like you said, the water parks included is a seven acre water park. And we have a surf simulator. Uh, we're actually the only resort in Orlando to have a double surf simulator, which is fantastic. Looking at the families and the, you know, seeing that all come to, to light. Now, this is not a timeshare or fractional model. Folks can buy a unit here. Is there any restriction? Could I live here if I wanted to? You can stay here 364 days a year. Okay. So one day a yeah. year. Um, but it is full ownership. Nothing yeah. like timeshare. And most of the folks that purchase here, they really are that lifestyle investor. They're going to come because they love it, but they're also going to put it into the rental program. So uh, when we get back, we'll talk about that part of it. What would it look like from a rental perspective? How does that get done? And all those questions that folks have. Uh, when we come back, we'll also play real estate trivia, give you a chance to win a prize next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Elms. 
Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Are you ready to profit in paradise? Hi, it's Robert Helms. And if you think real estate investing means tenants, toilets, and termites, think again. Located just a short plane ride from the U.S., a virtually untouched paradise awaits. The beautiful country of Belize. When you go to Belize with the Real Estate Guys, you'll spend four fabulous days discovering one of the most intriguing real estate markets I've ever seen. With its jungle rainforests, pristine beaches, and 81-degree turquoise water, Belize is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Plus, it's considered one of the top seven tax havens in the world. Belize property is on the rise, and many experts think the best is yet to come. But don't just take my word for it. Come experience Belize firsthand at our upcoming investor field trip. When you join us, you'll discover the many reasons we love Belize, like tremendously undervalued beachfront land, super low taxes, ease of doing business, and so much more. Get the details at realestateguysradio.com. Just click on events. See paradise for yourself. Click events at realestateguysradio.com, and I'll see you in beautiful Belize. For investors, Timberland has become the symbol of safety. Global tropical timber demand continues to surge as the world's population increases. The need for managed, sustainable timber production forests has never been greater. When stock markets crash, trees keep growing. Direct ownership of fully managed tropical timberland acreage is now available to accredited investors. Prime valuable hardwood groves close to the beautiful Costa Rican border generate and maintain superior long-term wealth. Qualified, accredited investors should email timber at realestateguysradio.com for more information. Consider visiting our forest plantations to see for yourself. Email timber at realestateguysradio.com. This announcement does not constitute either an offer to sell securities or a solicitation of an offer to purchase. Offering made by prospectus only. For more information, email timber at realestateguysradio.com. Hello, Robert Kiyosaki. Listen to the Real Estate Guys. They're wild and crazy, but they really know what they're talking about. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program this week, broadcasting from beautiful Orlando, Florida. We're talking about lifestyle investing. Can you invest in a resort property and have it make financial sense as well as provide great experiences for you and your family? Before we get back to our discussion with Nick Rohrbach, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia, your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question, which I'm going to ask you in a minute, and as soon as you think you know the answer, send your best guest to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, your mailing address, because if you're the winner, we're going to send you an awesome book called Life Defining Moments from Bold Thought Leaders, a great collection of inspirational stories. You're going to love it. That can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week on the show, our profitable niche was investing internationally, and we asked this, the TripAdvisor 2018 Traveler's Choice Awards lists the top 10 airlines in the world. Only one U.S. carrier is on the list. Which one? Well, the answer is number six on the list, Southwest Airlines. Number one, by the way, is Singapore Airlines, number two, Air New Zealand, and number three, Emirates. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. How many hotels are officially inside of Walt Disney World? We're a stone's throw from the Magic Kingdom here and all of the glory that is Walt Disney World. Well, there's a bunch of hotels. How many? If you know or want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Give us your name, the answer to the question, which is a number, and your mailing address so that if you're the first person with the right answer, you'll get a copy of Life Defining Moments from Bold Thought Leaders. That's today's real estate trivia question. It's our series on profitable niches in real estate. We're talking about resort investing or what we call lifestyle investing. And Nick Warbach's with us from the Grove Resort and Spa in uh, Central Florida. You know, Nick, a, a lot of folks that are looking at a resort property are thinking about all the maintenance and the work and the grounds. And there's people here. The staff's amazing. People are friendly. We got in at 1.30 in the morning and there's a guard at the gate to make sure that nobody's getting in that's not supposed to be here. And uh, he was a joy, right? Pleasant from minute one, right? Great impression. It's a competitive market this market with all these folks coming in vying for attention. So let's talk about how the resort positions itself within the, the world of Orlando. Well, going back to, again, what I think all of us investors, uh, the key is really the management. Yeah. So we have been fortunate enough to secure a world-class management company. It's actually the largest privately owned hotel management company in the country. 
Uh, that's Benchmark Hospitality. They've been in business 37 years. And when you talk about having everything in place and lifestyle turnkey investing, you need that professional management so you don't have to deal with anything. So when you buy a condo here, you're not bothered by any of the maintenance that goes on. There's a full staff of engineers and mechanics here 24 seven. So all these condos are the same. So the guest experience is very important. Benchmark, they know the market. They've managed the number one rated resort on TripAdvisor for the last 10 years. That's the Villas of Grand Cypress down near Disney Springs. So to reach that credibility or, or that accomplishment, to be number one, rated number one on TripAdvisor for the last three years out of all the other resorts and things in Orlando, they know the market. They don't put their name on just anything. This is a, a significant opportunity for them also. This is one of the big side benefits of lifestyle investing in my mind is that I don't have to worry about finding a property manager and comparing one with another and this one rips me off and that one you know, decides to merge their business or move out of the area and I've got to find somebody else. Um, it really is turnkey. Everything is in place. And because you guys have approached this from the hospitality side, and yet you've got this unique real estate story, which is, hey, we took over a project that didn't get over the line. And because of that, the basis is low. What surprised me about it was the relative affordability. So let's talk about what the units cost and what they rent for and just kind of some of those metrics. So when the previous developer sold all these condos, he sold them at $300 a square foot. Okay. We're only at $235 a square foot right now. But if we were to rebuild this property from scratch today, talking about the cost of all these other projects going on, the condos would have to be double the price that we're offering them at today. Right. So, and yet they're, they're virtually brand new. I mean, they were built 10 years ago, but they've only been refinished. The, I mean, we're staying in a unit that has just been refinished. So it's essentially a brand new unit. feels like a brand new unit. It's beautiful. It's furnished. It's a nice, you know, architecture and great furniture and big TVs everywhere. And yet you look out the deck and you see the pools and the palm trees and the lake and all that stuff. So it's got a great feel. But because it's below replacement cost, it's a pretty good value. Now, obviously, every investor has to decide for themselves, does it make sense? And just because we're talking about lifestyle investment doesn't mean that if you bought a unit here, you'd have to come stay here. But I can see why a lot of people would want to. What's the range of, of uh, units and prices and that kind of stuff? So again, we have two and three bedroom condos ranging from 1,300 to 1,600 square feet. The condos start at 290,000. Wow. And that comes fully furnished down to the silverware. So you don't have to deal with or, or be worried about anything. Well, and there's washers and dryers in the units. And I mean, it's a full-size kitchen. I mean, they're 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 beautiful units. That's not knowing the market that well, but that seems like a good price for the value. Of course, any investor is worried about, well, what about the cost of maintenance? And I hear that property taxes are higher in Florida. So let's talk about that part of it. Um, what are the components of expense for an investor here? It's very simple. It's just like owning any other condo. Um, it's full ownership, like we talked about. There is an HOA, as with any condo, but the unique part about our HOA is that it includes electricity. So I have a lot of people who own short-term single-family homes dealing with the exterior maintenance. However, sometimes their electric bill is seven, eight hundred dollars a month sure. because these customers are there leaving the doors open, etc. So our HOA starts at five twenty-eight a month. But it includes everything, electricity, cable, Wi-Fi, pest control, exterior building insurance, and water and sewer. So on top of the HOA, you have your real estate taxes, of course, which are only 1.5%. Wow. Um, and you also have an annual deep clean where, again, there's daily maid service here. So there's no deferred maintenance for these owners. Right. Every day there's a maid in here taking accountability. If there's damage, they go after the tenant for those things. So the annual deep clean is only $450 a year. $35 a month. They move all the beds and dressers. Then you have the interior insurance for your condo. And since it's just the interior contents and liability, it's only $600 a year. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the other side of it, which is the rental side. Now, you mentioned that you can stay up to 364 days a year, but imagine your typical lifestyle investor maybe is going to come and bring their family once a year. Maybe they come for a convention once a year. Uh, the rest of the time, how does the rental program work? So the management company handles everything. That's Benchmark Hospitality. Being in business for 37 years, they have all the relationships with the wholesale vendors, Travelocity, TripAdvisor, all these things. That's why our occupancy last month alone was 95%. So they totally do, sold out tonight, by the way. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. So they do everything. They take 
45% of the revenue. Okay. Okay. And that goes to paying, it's a full, fully staffed resort. Yeah. So that goes for everything. And then the owner gets 55% of the gross revenue that's created. Out of that 55%, what's unique is that our condo docs are very owner friendly. They have taken into account all the things necessary to make sure the integrity is kept up over the years. Yeah. But they take out 4% of that and they put it aside in a reserve fund. So every three to five years, they're going to refurbish the condo for you. That's already accounted for. Okay. So the investor receives 51% and that is deposited monthly into their bank account that they choose. So it's a monthly accounting and a monthly transfer. Correct. And also with today's day and age, with all the technology, there's a username and password, an owner portal, if you will. So you can go online, block your condo for your use, check its occupancy rate, check its performance, its nightly rate, et cetera. So it's very, very user friendly. Now you talked about the value proposition, you know, you can rent a hotel room here and then you've got, you know, a bed or a couple of beds and a bathroom, but here with the full kitchen and all those kinds of things. And yet the rates seem pretty good, right? And I, I, again, don't know the market that well, but it seems like the rates that you guys charge have a lot of room to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, One of the unique things that's going on right now is the window of opportunity. Um, We have sold 320 condos out of 878. So that being said, the window, we're only 30% sold. There's a lot of room to grow as prices continue to increase. Why are the prices going to continue to increase? Because our nightly rate is going to continue to increase. We've been open a year since last March, March 10th. So we've ironed out a lot of kinks. Obviously, we didn't, we did, we were still under construction. Our restaurant wasn't finished. Our water park wasn't finished. And the water park is really the icing on the cake. That is included in the nightly rate. So average nightly rates, you're going to experience higher than average here because of all the amenities that are included. You know, the demand is hard to argue with. There's always been a demand for Orlando. Seems like that's not changing. We always want to look at the supply side as well. Uh, Nearly 900 units. That's a big property, but it is. It's big. It's beautiful. How many acres here? 110 acres. Oh my gosh. The buildings take up 66 of those acres. Okay. Another thing that makes it unique is it's seven stories tall and it's all 100% poured concrete from top to bottom. So this place is like a bunker, unlike a lot of other construction that you see out there. It's very unique. Well, you and I actually walked through some units last time I was here, hard hard hats and everything, right? And looked at uh, the work that they were doing. Again, the bones of the building were here. And so when we did that, I got the opportunity to see kind of backstage, if you will, stripped, you know, out. Then you come back and you stay in a completely furnished unit that's beautiful and great, you know, art and all that kind of stuff. It's quite a construction project, except really it's mostly just superficial stuff. The the bones of it were here. And so talk about absorption. You've got another 500 units still coming. How are you integrating that into the rental program? I mean, we're seeing a unit that last time I was here wasn't available. So talk about that side of it as, as the units are being sold and rehabbed. If I were to buy a unit today, how long till my unit makes it into the rental program? Great question. So we have just completed 293 condos in phase two. That is currently what we're we're offering. We've, re- we've only released 54 condos to the market so far. So it's a really unique opportunity to pick one with a great view and things like that. However, we're not just dumping 880 condos on the market. We've been open a year. So when we opened, we started with 184 condos. Okay. Then we completed 108 more. That completed phase one. So the management company has had time to grow into itself. And then phase two, we released 100, then another 100. So we have 453 condos that are in the hotel generating revenue now, about to bring on another 150. So it'll take us to a total of 600. But with 450 rooms, we're in such demand, we're at 100% occupancy. So they're doing a phenomenal job. Another thing I want to mention is when you launch a resort, there's a ramp up period. Sure. It's typically about 18 months is what I get from the management company, give or take a little bit of time. So within that time frame, what happens is, again, going back to the management company, their relationships are key to filling this place. When you first launch, 80% of your business is coming through wholesale outlets. That's the trip advisors, the travelocities. However, those services aren't free. Right. They take a cut, which means our nightly rate's a little lower. A bigger cut than you would think, actually, yes. However, it's necessary when you launch yep. to a market. And over that 18-month ramp-up period, 
that business transitions to 80% direct to consumer. So you're going to, that's another reason why you'll start to see higher nightly rates. And uh, again, it's going to justify higher price increases as those nightly rates increase as well. Most investment property is priced based on some multiple of its investment. We look at an apartment building and we buy based on cap rate in, in the market. Here, as you see the demand go up and as pricing goes up, that's going to have an underlying effect to the property. But if I look at this many units, I think, well, what happens when two years from now I want to sell? Talk about that, a resale from a, of an investor who's already bought a unit. Great question. So as far as resales go, there are no restrictions on resale. So you can sell at any point in time. Most people are buying for the long-term cash flow, sure. 95% of the investors. However, certain things come up in families' lives. And the difficulty to sell a product like this is, is very low. So it's just like selling a single-family home, townhome. It goes on the MLS. You list it with a local realtor who obviously I can give you a great recommendation. Yep. Um, so it's very easy. There's a condo hotel down the road. It's it's 11 years old though. It's called Florides. And the again going back to our entry point in the marketplace, uh, they have 10-year-old condos for resale listed for the same price per square foot that we're bringing to market brand new condos. Wow. Without a water park and things like that. Yeah. So it's an amazing opportunity to get to get in at these prices. Well, and if you think about this, right? I always like to, to reverse, reverse engineer this stuff. Um, just from the investor developer point of view, there's a lot of inventory to sell here. So it makes sense for the developer to say, hey, rather than squeeze every dime of profit we could get, we want to move it fast. We want to make sure we have people here who buy for the right reason. And so there's some great incentives. And one of the things I was really excited about was this incentive you have for buyers that is fairly short-lived, but for the next year and a half or so. Talk about that. That's pretty unique. It's absolutely unbelievable. Um, so what we're offering, no one else is offering this in the marketplace. Because we're so far ahead of construction and we're doing so well, the developer actually gave us an 8% guaranteed return on the purchase price until January 2020. In addition to that, the developer is going to pay your HOA dues until January 2020. Wow. So not only can you use the property, there is a restriction. You, you can only use the property 14 days a year in that program. If you're going to take advantage of that. If you're sure, going to take because the developer, in order to do that, is going to need to have the rental nights. Exactly. And then after that, you just go right into the normal rental program. However, you can opt out of that leaseback program at any time and go into the normal rental program with a 90-day notice. So if you see your unit or your condo outperforming that 8%, you can always take advantage of that option as well. Okay, very cool. But in addition to that, which is amazing, I know there's an extra incentive for listeners of the real estate guys. Absolutely. So we're offering $7,000 towards closing costs. Okay, but the major thing here is we will take a 10% deposit, which is refundable, yep. until these investors can come to property, typically a 30 to 45 day window, where I can make that fully refundable. Because we're so confident once you're here, you're going to absolutely love it. Well, I know people are going to want to come because for this type of investment, a lifestyle investment, you want to see if the lifestyle fits. But I know you've had people that have bought sight unseen. I think this is a great thing, though. You can kind of some to kick the tires, I guess. Come try it out. If you don't like it, no harm, no foul. If you do like it, awesome. But on top of the 7000 if you do want to come and check it out, which I encourage you to do, we're going to give you an additional $3,000 to cover those travel expenses uh -huh. at closing. So a total of $10,000 towards closing costs. All right, cool stuff. Well, we like to stop short of trying to pitch any particular deal here on the radio, but I wanted people to understand that this is a unique real estate story. We've enjoyed the time here and, and et cetera. And because you've been gracious enough to make this uh, available, um, you've also put together a report for the listeners. And this isn't just about the Grove Resort. This report is about you know, how, how you pick a, a turnkey lifestyle uh, investment. Talk about what's in the report. The report's going to talk all about the market in Orlando, um, the opportunity, what makes the Grove so different, things to avoid in the marketplace whenever you're looking for a lifestyle investment, because we encourage people to go to other properties sure. and see what makes us so unique and why it's working for over 320 people at this point. All right, good stuff. So if you're interested in that, all you have to do is send an email to lifestyle at realestateguysradio.com. 
lifestyle at realestateguysradio.com. That'll also get you Nick's contact information so that if you want to ask more questions or find out more about these great incentives, you can do that. Uh, it's, it's kind of a unique deal in that you're not saying it's for a year or it's for 18 months. It's until January of 2020. So I guess the longer people wait, the less the, the benefit is, but there's still a lot of that benefit left. And I think it speaks well to the fact that the developer has confidence that the, that the product's going to going to produce or wouldn't be able to do that. Now, before I get you out of here, you've, you've now dealt with over 300 people that have made the decision to buy. What are the things that those people have in common? They've come, they've taken a look. Uh, is it is it ROI thereafter or personal use? Tell us kind of the person that has made the decision to invest here. Who, who's your clientele? It's really a combination. So I speak to hundreds of investors all the time. Um, all at once. And it, they, it's funny, the buyers that come out of those seminars or, or different workshops that I speak at, uh, it starts off bottom line ROI, ROI, ROI. Obviously, I have a guaranteed return, so I have a guaranteed cash flow right now. Yep. And it gets us through that ramp up period where so many investors have been so confident that look at what we've done in the last year without a restaurant and a water park. Right. So if we look down the road all the way to January 2020, where are we going to be at that point? Obviously, it's going to continue to trend upwards. So that's another reason why so many people have been so comfortable putting their money here. Awesome. Well, Nick, we sure appreciate uh, your time today and the story and making that great uh, offer to our listeners. Again, if you'd like to get a copy of the report, and that'll get you all Nick's contact details. All I have to do is send an email to lifestyle at realestateguysradio.com. Nick, thanks for uh, being on the show today. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. When we come back from Orlando, Florida, I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. This portion of the Real Estate Guys radio program is brought to you by International Coffee Farms, where you can own a parcel of land in your very own specialty coffee farm in Panama for as little as $15,000. Here's how it works. Deeded half-acre parcels entitled Specialty Coffee Farms in Boquete, Panama are turnkey managed professionally on your behalf by a team of local experts. Sustainable average income is estimated at 12% and cash flow can begin within 12 to 15 months from the date of your parcel ownership. International Coffee Farms' mission is to own and operate specialty coffee farms that are economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable. As part of this mission, 20% of the gross profits of each farm is committed to a socially sustainable fund to improve the lives of the Panamanian coffee farm workers and their families. International Coffee Farms currently owns and operates nine specialty coffee farms with half-acre parcels available for immediate ownership. To find out how you can become a coffee farm owner in Paquete, Panama, email coffee at realestateguysradio.com. That's coffee at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Patrick Donahoe of Paradigm Life. Over the last few years, I've had the privilege of sharing the services of Paradigm Life with you loyal Real Estate Guys Radio listeners through our website, www.beerbank.com, and also on the annual Investor Summit at Sea. Subsequently, we have seen a variety of financial situations across the socioeconomic spectrum and how everyone, regardless of their situation, would improve their financial lives by following the system we specialize in. As a result of this experience, we have created an online e-learning system so anyone without obligation can learn about the infinite banking concept. This free e-learning program is found on our website, www.beerbank.com. So check it out today. The website again is www.beerbank.com. Hi, I'm Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Listen up. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Hey, if you've ever thought of doing bigger deals with other people's money, coming out to the secrets of successful syndication and happens in September, all the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com. We're talking about profitable niches and today lifestyle investing, investing in a property that you would love to spend time at. And I tell you what, this is a beautiful property. Yeah, you know, it's funny. You just did that little promo for uh, Secrets of Success successful syndication 
And it reminds me of one of my very first syndications, which was a resort property. A lifestyle investment. Yeah, I've told that story a few times, but for those of you that haven't heard it, it was pretty simple. We were on an airplane and we were on our way to San Antonio, Texas. There was three of us, you and I and a friend. And we'd just come back from Puerto Vallarta. And he was like, this guy was in love with this property. He really wanted to buy the property. Couldn't figure out how to put the deal together. You grabbed a Southwest napkin, you started scribbling on the back of the napkin, and you showed him how to do the deal. And I ended up going in. So he did the syndication. He was the sponsor, if you will. Yep. And I came in and I took one slice. And the model was pretty simple. What he did was he took a $450,000 condo, added another $50,000 to be able to outfit it and, and kind of seed the marketing budget and the, the operating account. And then he sliced it into 10 pieces and anybody could buy in a piece for 50 grand. For 50 grand, we got three weeks of personal use and we got one tenth of the cash flow on the weeks that it was rented. And it was an overnight or weekly type rental, vacation type rental, beautiful property right on the water. It was great. And the way I ended up doing it is I borrowed money out of a property that I already owned. So I just got a mortgage, a little cash out refinance mortgage. Yep. Had a payment of about 180 bucks a month. It was tax deductible because it was used for investment purposes, right? Yep. And so um, I, I put the $50,000 in the deal and then I got the three weeks of use, which are worth about fifteen hundred dollars a week each yeah so right there was about forty five hundred dollars of value not cash but a value that i got and when i looked at my 180 i was only putting out maybe a little more than a couple grand a year so i was positive right there just on that basis but my share of the income was about two grand also so i ultimately ended up getting into this deal for free and it was just a very simple little syndication that you threw together on the back of a napkin. The guy ran with it. I bought into it. And I had that property for, I don't know what, you know, several years, five yep. or six years. And uh, it turned out to be great. And we would go down there. My kids would go down there and use it. I would trade it with people and say, hey, just spend a week at my condo in exchange for whatever. So it was a barter tool. So lifestyle investing is really cool because the property is cool. It's very in demand. Uh, there's a little bit of prestige in having it. Hey, this is my condo on the beach in Puerto Vallarta. Ooh, that's really cool. You know, I only own one tenth of it, but I own it. It's not like a timeshare. Right. So it's just, oh, it's just a timeshare. No, no, it's not a timeshare. I actually have equity. I own own it. But really all I owned was just, uh, I arbitraged the cash flow because I didn't really have any real money of my own in the deal. So anyway, it was just a cool, cool story. So every time I, I, we talk about lifestyle investing, I always go back to that very first lifestyle investing uh, investment I ever made. And it was just such a great story. It was a lot of fun. You know, we are obviously big fans of real estate syndication, which means when you run out of your own money and your own credit, you don't have to stop. You can find a great deal and put together investors. And not everyone's interested in that, but obviously we usually have a couple hundred people come out to our syndication event to twice learn that. Yeah, twice a year. So we've got a big bunch of folks. When I look at what's happening here, imagine a syndication where there was a guaranteed return for the first 18 months. Well, it takes so much of the risk out, right? I mean, it still has to pencil. It can't be like a teaser loan. Right. Right. I mean, the, the, the teaser loans back in the day, you could do those 228 loans and you get the two-year teaser rate and the numbers pencil and all of a sudden the, the thing resets in two years and now it doesn't pencil. So you need to make sure the underlying deal pencils in today's market. But, you know, not to have to worry about the ramp up not to have any uncertainty at the very beginning, first impressions, especially if you're working with investors. That way you're providing cash flow right from the beginning. And that's that's real strong too, because it's no fun having to wait. Yeah. So a syndicator could, you know, take down a half a dozen units, have cash flow, right? And then upside when the value goes up. And in the meantime, the return's pretty good. On the other end of it, someone goes, Well, you know, three hundred thousand, I don't have that much. Well, do you have five friends? Six people each put in fifty thousand dollars. You're at three hundred thousand dollars, and maybe there's a great opportunity there to share some time, if you will, because there's no restriction on that. And each one of those folks might get some use, just like the model that uh, that you talked about. So lots of different ways to uh, to really approach lifestyle investing. And you know, maybe being in Orlando isn't for you. Maybe you're looking at a market where there's you know something else to do. Branson, Missouri, you want to go see the shows. Las Vegas, Nevada, you want to be in that lifestyle. Lots of different places to consider this. But the idea of lifestyle investing is blurring the line between just having it be a pure ROI detached investment and something you actually get some personal use and enjoyment out of. Well, think about it. If you're going to spend 500 grand and go get yourself a condo in a nice resort area, that's cool, but it's only one area and it's good to empty most of the time. Maybe it pays you a little bit of income, but if you were to put together a group of people who all had 500 grand and you bought 10 different markets, 
you've spread your $50,000 out over 10 different markets. Now you've got three weeks or two weeks or however you pencil your deal in all these different markets. Right. So now you've got a lot of flexibility in your lifestyle. You've got a lot of diversification in your marketplace. You've got income from different sources. I mean, one of the things Nick said that really stands out, and I love the Orlando marketplace for right. a lot of reasons. It is not just a resort area. It is not just a vacation town. It's a huge convention town. It's got huge, Florida's got tons of in-migration, a lot of it from the East Coast, no income tax state, great weather, affordable. And, you know, South Florida is interesting. It's expensive and crowded, but really Central Florida has got a lot of all the right things going on. So I've been a big fan of this market for a number of years. And you think about the opportunity to be able to get into a market like that and, and realize that it isn't completely seasonal. It isn't just about the summer. It isn't just about the winter, but year round. And when you're talking about buying any type of an investment for the production of income, having a balanced income across all 12 months is also a big, big plus. Big thanks to Nick for spending time with us today and hosting us at this beautiful resort. If you want more information about his report and how you can learn more about the grow, just send an email to lifestyle at realestateguysradio.com. Next week, we're going to talk about a completely different profitable niche in real estate. And when we're done with this series, it's time to ask the guys. If you've got a question burning in your mind that you'd like to ask the real estate guys, all you have to do is go to the website at realestateguysradio.com, click the button that says Ask the Guys, and uh, in a few weeks, we're going to answer a whole bunch of those questions. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life, powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid South Home Buyers, low cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.